This is the Straight Truth Podcast, biblical answers to difficult questions from a Christian worldview. So often we, we continue to get questions about uh, women's ministry in the church or outside of the church. Um, people that understand what the, the roles are between men and women in their home and in the church, but just have these lingering questions that, that, that are still difficult to reconcile, such as things like this. So can a woman write a book that has to do with theology or even have a podcast on YouTube or a channel where they, they, are, um, they are giving general output about, um, about the Bible or theology? Or does every outlet for women's teaching, let's say according to the Bible, does every outlet for women's teaching need to be only directed towards other women? Or does that particularly, or does that pertain only to teaching in the church? Yeah. Do, if my question makes sense. Yeah, it does, yeah. It does make sense. Let me, let me start with something very general. And this, this is um, just my own concern. I am concerned that local church ministry is often unnecessarily busy in general. Like we think that somehow spiritual health is gonna be achieved by ramping up activity. And so you end up with all sorts of, a variety of ministries that are operating almost every day on a church campus. Mm -hmm. And people are leaving their homes and driving up there and spending time together on a daily basis. I fear that, that uh, we've lost a sense of contentment that allows us to, to recognize the variety of assignments God has given us. He has given us the assignment to gather together regularly. He has given us the assignment to exhort each other all the more as we see the day approaching. That's the purpose for the corporate gathering. But he's also given us assignments at home as fathers and mothers, husbands, wives. He's given us assignments at work. He's given us assignments in the public realm with respect to citizenship and those, those sorts of things. And so I, I am concerned that in general, we, we wear the people of God out and actually introduce influences that are counterproductive spiritually just by virtue of constant, constant activity. Now, let's apply that to men's ministry and women's ministry. This, the same can be true. You know, you're gathered all the time learning to be a good husband. Mm. Well, there's some point you gotta go home and be a good husband, mm. right? And gather together all the time talking about how to be a good wife and good mother. It's wonderful to have gatherings like that, but at some point you have to go home and live it. And so I'm concerned when it comes to the realm of men's ministries and women's ministries that we have all of this ramped up activity, but is it the most edifying thing to do? Interesting to me when you look at the book of Titus, for example, and you consider what older women are to be teaching younger women, what older men are to be teaching younger men, mm -hmm. it really doesn't set its focus on forgive me for saying it, it's based on deep theology, mm -hmm. but it's not deep theological conversations or mm -hmm. activity. Yeah, sure. It's about you living life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the influence that older women would be having on younger women. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, let's talk about the hypostatic union today. It's, yeah, it's, right. it, it's about <laughs> how do you love your husband and love your children? Yeah. God has given elders to the church to teach the church theology. I'm not denying that God has given gifts for teaching throughout the body and that they're not made use of. But the primary teachers in the life of the church are its elders. And then in the home, you have moms and dads instructing. So I think if we just get back to those basics, it gives us real guidance about a lot of these questions. I think some of these questions emerge because we've already gone astray a bit at mm -hmm. the base level, which is who are the primary teachers of the church? It's elders. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about influence, where where is the focus of that influence in those texts that speak of women teaching women and men teaching men. What kind of teaching is it and where's the focus for the influence? With respect to women teaching men, 1 Timothy 2 is clear about that. Women are not to teach or exercise authority over men in a way that violates God's design. Obviously the context there is the church's mm -hmm. gatherings. Does that mean that a woman can't have any influence on a man at all with respect to theology. We know better than that because you see Aquila and Priscilla sitting down and meeting with Apollos. Mm -hmm. And they're both involved in that conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So scripture would not be violated for a woman to have a theological conversation with a man. However, I would say, again, if you embrace the whole of scripture's instruction, 
Godly women want to embrace godly womanhood. And so even if they're having a theological discussion with a man, they don't want, forgive me for saying it this way, I'm gonna say it this way, they don't wanna do it in a way that's manly. <laughs> you wanna do it in a way that reflects God's design for the sexes. And so uh, how, I, I trust the Spirit of God to work that out in a woman's practical application, but I'm just saying you wanna be mindful of that. So those are my thoughts that, that come to mind when you ask the question. So you, you just back to how I started this, it, it's okay if you have somebody who is a, a woman who is being faithful in the home in, in every way that, you, that you've mentioned, yeah. and, and yet they would like to use their free time here and there to write or to you know, maybe host a, a podcast like the one we're having where they're uh, exhorting uh, women or maybe, I don't know, other, other interests, uh, generally speaking. It's okay to do those kinds of things um, related to theology, that is. Um, yeah. Without violating scripture, I wouldn't say it's a nece- I, I wouldn't say it is necessarily a violation of scripture. I would say if you if you take the whole that we've talked about, all of that instruction, into your life, and then you consider some of these questions, I think you'll get answers from the Lord, from His Word, from that informed mind, that will drive you back to the most basic things. Make sure you are being faithful there mm. before you think about the extracurriculars. And mm. I think you'll see the extracurriculars shrink mm. because there's so much we've already been, been assigned in those basic areas that, that truly take a life's investment to do well. Mm. So I think what we end up doing, you and I have talked about this even um, with elder ministry in the life of the church. Am I doing this for me mm-hmm. or am I doing this for the people? And I think if you, you know, who's this, who are you doing this for? Mm-hmm. The, these writing interests, for example. Is this really because there's a, a void, mm-hmm. you know, in the information that's out there and, you, and the Lord needs for you to fill it? Right. Or is this about you? Mm-hmm. And if we can get ourselves out of the center of the picture and say, God, what have you made me to invest my life in? Mm-hmm. And then you say, I want to do that to the very best of my ability. Mm-hmm. I think you'll see some of the desire for these extracurriculars shrink because you've got a life's worth of investment represented yeah. in those basic things. Yeah. You know, Josh, again and again, I, just the way I've, I've learned to live my Christian life is I begin with the big picture and then I move to the particulars. Mm-hmm. And I think we often go astray in the particulars because we're not really listening to the big picture. And so I would, I would counsel women, men as well, but the question is about women's ministry. I would, I would, encourage women to think about the big picture first. Make sure you're doing that faithfully and well, and then think about the extras later. Women reading robust theology, of course. Women teaching other women, that's the primary way that women are meant to teach. Mm-hmm. You're teaching other women and children. In the life of the church, that's clear. Women are not to teach or exercise authority over men in a way that violates God's design. What about in your free time, spare time, outside the church, we'll make sure you're loving your husband well, loving your children well, investing in other women's lives in a way that the focus of that instruction is really about home life. Yeah. That's Titus 2. Right. You do those things in a way that really honors Christ and these other things, not only will they, you'll have less time for them, I think you'll have less desire for them. And I go back to a, to a general concern I have, which is I think we are substituting activity for substance when it comes to spiritual growth. Like if we just have more activity, people are gonna somehow grow. Mm. I don't think the answer is for more activity. I think the yeah. answer is, is for our hearts to learn a contentment in Christ that's mm. so glaringly absent yeah. in the culture, and I'm afraid is also absent in the church. Godliness with contentment mm. is great gain. Mm. And I fear we're suffering loss because even though there's godliness, there's, there's a true Christian life here, we're struggling with contentment. Mm. And so we're actually trying to fill a void with things that are robbing us. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Straight Truth Podcast. Now, Straight Truth is listener supported. So if you'd like to find out ways how you can help us to continue to produce this podcast, you can go to our website and find out ways to do that, straighttruth.net. At that website, you'll also find links to all of our previous episodes and our social media channels, so be sure to check it out. Straight Truth is a production of Walking in Grace Ministries, the preaching and teaching ministry of Pastor Richard Caldwell. 
For more information, go to walkingingrace.org.